I do want to just share something very briefly as we continue teaching through this series, A Strange Way to Save the World. And um, uh, we're continuing this Advent series. And wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, uh, that after an angel told this elderly priestly couple, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who we talked about last week, about the unlikely pregnancy uh, that they were to experience in their family, things take another strange turn. Uh, the same angel Gabriel is sent to announce news that will change all of human history forever. And here is the news. The news is that God's plan for all humanity, for all of the world, is to come into a forever relationship with him and to be eternally changed. And it was made possible because he worked through a very ordinary, extraordinary woman. And this, very briefly this morning, when we continue to look at this strange way that God chose to save the world, there are three things from the Gospel of Luke that I want us to pay attention to that begin with verse 30, where we see that God saw Mary, and we also see in verse 32 that Gabriel says that God is to be named Jesus, or his son, or the son is to be named Jesus, and then in verse 33, Jesus' kingdom is never going to end. And first, from Luke 1.30, we read these words. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. And this is just another way of telling Mary, the mother of Jesus, that God had seen her. And if you read this with a slightly different outlook, one might get the idea that a common thought back then might have been that if you encountered an angel like Gabriel, perhaps your time on earth was coming to an end. But not here, not here. It's clear that something else there's something about Mary that caused her to be significantly different from so many others. Out of all the places, out of all the people, out of all the possibilities, Gabriel says to Mary, God sees you. God favors you, which would have been a very, very unusual thing to say to someone who might have been as young as 14 years old. God saw Mary. And friends, remember, God sees you as well. And this is the most incredible, this is probably the most incredible thing to me about God. You don't have to be president or a CEO, someone with some sort of special status. God saw an ordinary woman and to set in motion his extraordinary plan. I have a question. Um, how many of you have a younger sibling? Anybody here have a younger sibling? Okay. Did anyone help to pick the name? of their younger sibling. Anybody here help pick that name? Yeah. And depending on a name for a new babe, deciding on a name for a new baby, that can be a big deal, right? It can be a really big deal. Uh, we did it a few times in our family. I love all of our kids' names. But choosing a baby name can also be, it can be very difficult. Do you go simple? Do you go rare? How many baby books do, do you think you read through to pick a name? Any, how many books did you read? with all of the names in them, right? All those books. Well, there was this Australian couple, and they had a daughter several years ago, and they couldn't decide on a name. And the husband brought up the name Langstra. Langstra, beautiful name, Langstra. Immediately, the wife fell in love with the name, and it was unique, it was romantic. The husband never revealed the meaning or the inspiration for the name. Now, dudes, you know, you do something like that, you don't tell the wife. <laughs> It's going to come back to get you. That is until the child was two years old. The wife, Claire, said, it wasn't until she was two years old that my husband told me it was actually his favorite soccer team, Arsenal, spelled backwards. And fans of the Arsenal football club, they praised the father for the name, going as far as to say the father was their hero. Right? But here's the second point. From Luke 31, 32, this name is to be given to Mary's new baby. Gabriel says, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. The name Jesus is actually a form of a Jewish name, Joshua, which means God saves. It was an extremely common name in the ancient pre-Christian world. As a matter of fact, because of some language changes that took place in the ancient Mediterranean world, which is where Mary and Joseph lived, it caused the name Joshua or Yeshua to begin appearing in numerous places as the name Jesus. The word is by the time that he was born, Jesus, 
was an extremely common name. Now, let me ask you this, not in my notes. How many of you know someone named Jesus now? A few of us, right? A few of us do. But back then, it was an extremely common name. But that's interesting. It's really interesting because God chose this ordinary girl who lived in an ordinary place in the world to give an ordinary name to an extraordinary child. Finally, the third thing that we hear of the angel Gabriel say, beginning in verse 32, he says, He will be great, will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The angel Gabriel is telling Mary, he's telling you, he's telling me that things will never be the same when Jesus comes to earth. That God is flipping everything on its head. That Jesus' kingdom is a forever kingdom. But his forever kingdom also had some practical impact, some practical effect. For example, children. In the ancient world, children were routinely left to die of exposure, especially if they were girls. Jesus' treatment of and teachings about children led to the forbidding of those kinds of practices, as well as orphanages. There's a Norwegian scholar named Baki who wrote a study of this impact, and the book is called When Children Become People, The Birth of Childhood and Early Christianity. Also, education. Jesus impacted education. The ancient world loved education, but tended to reserve it for the, for the elite The notion that every child bore God's image helped to fuel the move for universal literacy. People could learn to read. Love of learning led to monasteries and universities such as Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard. All began as Jesus-inspired efforts to love God with all of one's mind. Also, compassion. Jesus' compassion for the poor and the sick led to institutions for the lepers, the beginning of modern-day hospitals. As a matter of fact, our daughter was born in a hospital called Good Samaritan Hospital. You'll also find other places called Good Shepherd Hospital or St. Anthony. They were the world's first voluntary charitable institutions. Also, the whole idea of humility. The ancient world did not value this virtue at all. And Jesus' life as a foot-washing servant would eventually lead to the adoption of humility as a widely believed and held to virtue. Historian John Dixon writes this, it's unlikely that any of us would aspire to this virtue were it not for the historical impact of the crucifixion. Forgiveness. In the ancient world, virtue meant rewarding your friends and punishing your enemies. An alternative idea came out of Galilee. What's best in life is to love your enemies and to see people reconcile to you. Here's another one. Here's the last one. Humanitarian reform. Jesus consistently championed the excluded, people who are on the outside. His inclusion of women led to a community to which women flocked in disproportionate numbers. Slaves... Slaves, up to a third of the ancient world's populations, slaves might wander into a church fellowship and have a slave owner wash their feet rather than mistreat them. And one ancient text instructed bishops to not interrupt worship to greet a wealthy attender, but to sit on the floor and to welcome the poor. The truth is, the baby that was born for the world to Mary changed everything. Humanity, you and I, would never be the same again because of this promised child. I want to close with this thought. See, I told you I'd keep it short. I want to close with this thought. Frederick uh, Frederick Buechner, I don't know if you've ever heard that name, Frederick Buechner. He wrote a little book of character sketches of people from the Bible and what the Bible has to say about the angel Gabriel as he encounters Mary. This is what Buchner wrote. She struck him as hardly old enough to have a child at all, at all, let alone this child. But he had been entrusted with a message to give her. And he gave it. He told her that the child was to be named. Who he was to be. 
and something about the mystery that was to come upon her. You mustn't be afraid, Mary, he said. As he said it, he only hoped that she wouldn't notice that beneath the great golden wings, he himself was trembling with fear to think that the whole future of creation hung on the answer of a girl. It's an incredible story, an extraordinary story. And it's a story that's written just for you, with you in mind. Would you pray with me? God, we don't understand why you chose to do what you did through Mary, Joseph, the way that you did. But we are grateful that you saw her. You see us. And God, even as we were reminded this morning through our kids, you are not unseen. (laughs) You are part of everything. Even maybe when we don't recognize it, you are the presence that never leaves, never departs. We thank you for that. And God, as we continue to observe and enjoy and walk through this Advent season, Lord, may our anticipation continue to grow. We look forward to the time, the next few days, when we can indeed welcome you to earth. And remember that night all those years ago, so many years ago, in Bethlehem. We pray that we would always be attentive to hear from you. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.